burning down pretty good now. It's wasted all this time and effort. Let's give this another shot. Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill, glad you could join me. In this episode, we're going to construct a paracord rifle sling. Okay. Stay tuned. So we're going to build a, uh, a paracord uh, rifle sling, and we're going to do it with the, uh, the cobra weave, and then we're going to add a double cobra in uh, at the end as a shoulder pad. Uh, but I wanted it adjustable. There's two ways you could do this. You could uh, you just run the paracord cobra weave from the top sling swivel down to the bottom and kind of guesstimate the size of the uh, the sling. The only problem with that is, say it's summertime and you're just wearing a shirt versus wintertime when you're layered up with a jacket, a hoodie, whatever you're gonna be more bulked up so I'd like something that's a little bit adjustable that I can expand it a little bit or tighten it up depending on the season so the rifles either not too tight or slopping around uh, on me so I have some nylon webbing here and some double D rings and I went ahead and just uh, one continuous piece of uh, webbing here I ran the uh, I ran both of them through the uh, the double D rings and then up here as a turnaround this is where we're going to anchor in our cord on this end this end will uh, anchor it to the bottom uh, sling swivel down here on the on the buttstock and this will give us the ability to adjust this as needed. And this is a little bit of a pain in the butt getting it in here. This is just the idea that I came up with for this. And then we'll run this one through as well. These are the larger D rings so they can accommodate four passes of webbing through here. Actually, I'm going to run the bottom one first so it's not in the way. through like that. It's a little bit tight in here. There it goes. So pull our slack through. like that and now we're going to run it through this next one slide this guy down here this 
a little bit of working room here. Slide this way down here. Like I said, you don't have to use the webbing. It doesn't have to be adjustable. That's all personal preference. I just uh, wanted to do this one a little more intricately. Kind of a little brainstorm I've had for a while here. As soon as I get done with this wrestling match, we can get started on the sling. There we go. So I want to slide this down. Get a kink in here. I just wanted to add this part in so you guys could see how this is hooked up on here. Otherwise I'd spare you the wrestling match here. All right. There we go, there we go. Okay, so we have Actually, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit further. There we go. Okay. So what we have basically here, we have this much slack on these two tails these two tag ends to expand the length. I can run these all the way down to here if need be. And then we have this much length here to tighten it up. I can always pull this through. And I actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these up so they're almost even with this here. That way I've got an equal amount of adjustment to either expand it, the length, or to tighten it up. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to here. I'm just pulling the slack out. There we go. That's pretty close. Now we have pretty close to an equal amount of adjustment to either uh, expand it or tighten it. I'll bring this up here and give you guys a closer look at what I'm doing here. Double D rings, good security so it won't slip when it's adjusted. And that's just, uh, whoop, that's just uh, attached right to the sling swivel. And then this end here is where we're going to run our paracord. Get you guys in frame here. Actually, get me in frame. Okay. All right. So I peeled off about 30, 35 feet of paracord, and I'm going to use black on this. So what you do, just run your paracord up, J 
join your two ends together. I'm going to run this all the way down to the bottom. This we're going to run through the clasp bottom here. With the lark's head. Just like that. And when we bring our cordage back through, our two ends should be fairly even to one another. Oh, they're off just a little bit, but that's fine, that's acceptable. So we're gonna come up to the top. Sling swivel. We'll pull our cordage through. Make sure we're not tangled here. There we go. Now this is very important. This is where you start off getting the size of your sling. Remember, with this, we have probably, what, about three inches? Probably three inches of adjustment, either to expand or tighten. I'd like to get it pretty close right off the bat. And that way it leaves this in reserve for, like I said, if you bulk up with a jacket or, or uh, a hoodie or whatever in the wintertime, you naturally want to expand this out so it'll go over your, your clothing. So... I'm going to guesstimate this. And this is where our paracord sling is going to run all the way down to here with the cobra weave. And then when we are uh, done with that, we're going to run a double cobra down probably about 10 inches for a shoulder pad up here on the top. But we'll get to that in a while. We're going to be working on this for, for a while before we get to that. So. So this is a very important part here, and the way we're going to do this is, just going to kind of guesstimate it, and then tie this off so we can give it the old fit test. Just like that, just throw a single overhand into it, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and try this on. And see how it fits and I'm going to adjust it uh, either tighten or expand I'm, I'm thinking it might be a little bit too big but I'm gonna go ahead and get this to where it needs to be and then we'll start on the uh, start on okay the, uh, the I gave it the fit test and this is what I have and I like how it fits it hangs good over my shoulder and then uh, the crossbody carry uh, it's not too tight and it's not too loose. I, I really like how it fits. So, and like I said, this gives me a nice adjustment down here at the bottom, uh, if need be. But uh, you know how you you like your rifle to uh, sit on you. So just this is very important to get it right because uh, uh, otherwise you get this all done. You come back. You you. you Put it on and it doesn't feel right you know take all the knots out and readjust everything so i'm pretty happy with this so i'm gonna go ahead and try to get in frame here for you guys turn this swivel around here It's 
give me a moment here. I'm having technical problems. Here we go. And also, when you do this, you want to start out with plenty of cordage. It's better to have a little too much than not enough. Otherwise, you get to the uh, you get near the end and you run out, and that's pretty aggravating. So, Let's see if I can get this out of here without forming a big bird's nest. You notice I've got my thumb and forefinger pinched on here. Keeping the uh, the spot as a reference mark. Make sure none of these are crossed. All right, I think we're looking pretty good here. All right, so the cobra weave. separate these strands. Put your left on your left and your rights on your rights. And it's kind of a pain in the butt at first because you got a lot of cordage to deal with. Now the cobra weave, hopefully you guys can see that. You know I'm going to go ahead and reposition this camera so uh, you guys get a closer look at what I'm doing here. Stay tuned. Okay, I think I got it straightened out here. I always start off with my right side. You can start off on the left, whichever, whichever you prefer. Make sure these are even here. Right side, form a loop, just like this. I'm trying not to pull this through here. Left side. Come over, over your line from your right. Go underneath and then up through the loop on your right side. Once I get this started, it'll be easier to demonstrate this. your line down dress it up make it neat make sure these are even here looks okay in the beginning it's a pain in the butt because of all the extra line just get it nice and tight, dress it up. Now you're going to notice on here that we have one line sticking up, we have one line facing downward. Okay, the downward line is your guide. That's telling you that that's the side that you're going to lead off with. So, in other words, we're going to use this. The side with the facing the, the line facing downward, we're going to form. It's just a repetitious action. We're going to form 
the loop or B-I-G-H-T, a bite in rope craft, not craft terminology. We're going to take this side. We're going to go over the line, under the two. and up through the loop. Feed your line through. And then tighten it down. Just like that. Now we have one facing up, one facing down. So the side facing down is telling us that that's the side that we're gonna we're gonna lead off with. So we're gonna form our loop. We're gonna go over, under the two, and up through the loop. And it's repetitious. That's all you do. You just keep doing that all the way down. Pull it nice and snug. We got this side facing up, this one facing down. So it's just left, right, left, right, left, right. It tells you which way to go. You just look for the one facing down. I mean, it's basically foolproof. Form your loop over the end, underneath the two and up through the loop. Snug it down. And again, we just did the left, now it's the right. And if you forget which way to go, you just look on here. This one's facing up, this one's pointing down. It's always the one that's down that you start off with. It's, it's foolproof. So we're going to keep working on this all the way down until we reach the uh, plastic uh, clasp at the bottom that we uh, started off with. So now that you guys kind of have an idea, I'll give you the uh, get, get back to the uh, the wide shot. Stay tuned things from my perspective instead of being from the opposite end. So again we have this one's facing up, this one's facing down, so it just it tells you which which one to go first. So is the one that's facing down. Form your loop over underneath the two and up through the loop that you started with. Grab both ends. Give it a snug, a tug rather, to snug it down. And as you get further down, it'll become a little easier as you start to, your two uh, long pieces of rope start to get smaller. You don't have as much, uh, line to feed through here. Oops, see, I was going to start with the right. It's easy to forget, but then I looked. This one's up, this one's down. It's basically foolproof. It, it tells you which way to go. It's easy to get confused when you're doing it for a while and your mind starts to wander. See we already have our our cobra weave starting to take take shape here. So this one's facing down. Go over under the two. This will be the two. The two are the ones that we're wrapping around. Grab your ends, snug it down. We've only 
we've been working on this for a couple minutes. It's already already starting to uh, take effect. That clicking noise, that's a raven. There's a lot of ravens up here in the high country. They make some very interesting, very interesting sounds. I like to work on a project out here and just stay silent and listen. Listen to the sounds of nature. I've mentioned this before. For those who are new to the channel, I'm up in the high country, about 6,000 foot elevation up here. What snagged up over there. That's why I'm doing this on a blanket because one of my uh, military surplus blankets. This paracord tends to. Uh, when you're working on something like this, it tends to snag up on everything, pine cones and twigs and it's very aggravating. You spend half your time trying to untangle your cordage, so I just spread out a one of my military surplus blankets and as a work surface. It just makes it a lot easier to deal with. So there's our cobra weave, nice and tight. It's coming out, it's looking good. The nice thing about a paracord rifle sling, it's redundancies in survival. You know, you can get a, there's a lot of different rifle slings on the market. The nice thing about this is, as a redundancy in survival, not only is it a rifle sling, it's also paracord. So in a pinch, if you found yourself in a bad situation and you needed Needed paracord. We have a lot of it right there. It's built right into your right into your setup. The redundancies are very important. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this uh, for a while, and I shall return in a, in a bit. Stay tuned. here. I'll show you how we're going to terminate this. It's coming out nice.
going to run this right up onto the starting point here where we originally uh, hitched it to the uh, clasp with the lark's head. Should be able to get one more in there. Pull it tight. And I think that's all we're going to get on that. So what I'll do is, before I cut this, I'm going to give it another fit test. Just uh, pick it up, put it on, make sure it's, uh, it's still fitting good before I cut this. And uh, so let me go ahead and uh, check this out and I'll be back in a sec. I gave it a fit test. Um, it was a little snug. So I adjusted down here probably about a good inch. So I still have about probably an inch and a half of adjustment here. But uh, it seemed to fit okay now. I did have to I did have to let that out so just so you know when you're if you choose to make one of these uh, if you're not going to do it with the adjustment you might want to make it just a hair oversize because once you get all the uh, you get all the uh, the cobra weave in here it does take up a certain uh, certain amount of the room the slack there so what we're going to do here we're going to pull this good and tight and we're going to cut these And then what we'll do, you leave a little tag in on there, and you just melt it. And then you can take something and just kind of mushroom it down. In this case, I'll use scissors, not my fingers. You got to be careful with that stuff. I learned my lesson the hard way a long time ago. Let's see if you guys see what I'm doing there. So I heated that and then tapped it down while it was still hot. And you cut these back about a quarter of an inch. So I have this much cordage left over. Two pieces. I'll find a use for those. You know, bow drill. Looks like perfect size for bow drill cordage. It won't go to waste. A little bit of wind out here. So this is what we have. Nice and neat job there. So now what we're going to do is, I want to add at the top, I want to add a double cobra down, oh I don't know, 10 inches maybe. I'm going to try it back on and do another fit test so I can kind of get an idea where it sits. And the idea with the double cobra, we have a we add another cobra over the top of this, and then we'll terminate it the same way we terminated the bottom. Uh, I want to do that so I get a little more shoulder padded 
padding rather because I noticed when I had this over my shoulder uh, this cobra weaves kind of hard and it's narrow it was kind of kind of cutting into my uh, collarbone a little bit so let me get a, a length an idea of the length there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use green I'm going to use OD green paracord for the for the double cobra I think that'll look kind of cool for for a shoulder pad and uh, we'll go ahead and conclude the video so uh, let me get a fit test and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to add that double cobra in. Stay tuned. I uh, performed a fit test and this seems to be the sweet spot here. So I tied a piece of the uh, leftover paracord <coughs> onto the spot to, uh, to mark it. So we're looking at probably, oh I don't know, that's probably what 11 inches. So we're going to run a double cobra with the OD green down to here. So I peeled off, I don't know what I got here, about 10 foot of OD green. So the same technique applies. Find your, your two ends. Run it back to the end so you have your loop. Now we're going to come over here. I'm going to run it right on the back side here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run our starter loop off. We're going to go underneath. Just like we were running the cobra weave, same exact thing. And where we had the two strands that we were following, uh, we're just going to use the existing cobra weave that's already here, the one we just uh, just uh, installed as our guide. We're going to run the, the cobra over the top of a cobra. This is called the double cobra. So it's the same thing. We uh, I always start off on my right for some reason. So we make a, a loop. We're around the back side here. We're going to come over, just like the cobra weave, underneath the existing cobra, and up through the loop. Now when we tighten this down, we want to get all the way up here at the top, so it covers up as much of the, uh, well, let's get this centered here. There we go. Cover up as much of that as we can so it looks neat and pull it tight, as tight as you can. Now since we started on the right, the left is the side with the line that's facing downward. Just like the Cobra, same thing. Now we're over here, we go over the top underneath the existing cobra and up through the loop on the left. And pull it down. So we have this side facing up, this side down, down always goes first. Over the top, underneath, up through the loop. And pull it snug. And now we're back to doing our regular Cobra again. Very easy to do. If anybody uh, decides to do this and you have any questions, uh, always on any of my videos, if you have any questions, always feel free to hit me up. Shoot me an email. Email will be better because uh, I don't always get notifications. If somebody comments on a video, YouTube's pretty sketchy in that. Uh, in that regard so I don't always get a uh, 
the notification that somebody's commented so at the end of the videos you can always find my email address palehorsesurvival at yahoo.com and uh, just shoot me a shoot me an email I'm always happy to uh, clarify something or offer advice whatever answer questions that you may have goes see I was talking and almost got confused here that's up this is down so we go down goes first it's talking instead of concentrating here and we're breaking real close to having this project wrapped up now some of you may be watching this video you may have noticed the rifle that I'm that I've installed a sling on. It's a Benjamin 392S. I recently picked this rifle up and I have one of the old Woodstock varieties. I grew up shooting those, hunting with it. Absolutely love it. They discontinued those, unfortunately, and this is the new one. I think it came out last year. Anyways, I kicked it around, kicked it around the, the idea for a couple of months before I finally pulled the trigger, pun intended, and decided to buy one. I was very hesitant. And to be perfectly honest with you, I like it. I like it a lot. I design things, I build and modify things. I personalize almost everything I have. And this rifle was no exception. So I've been in a big modification project with it and uh, personalizing it, making it mine. So I went ahead and I added a sling to it. I'm not going to go over all that in this video because I'm going to shoot a review video of the 392S and you'll find that on the channel probably within about a month. While I was going over this rifle I uh, went over it with a fine tooth comb. I discovered a big surprise that I don't believe anybody else has discovered and it just greatly sweetened this deal and so I, I ran with it and did some mods with it I don't believe anybody else knows it exists uh, I believe I'm the first one to run across it so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to reveal all that in the review video that will be upcoming and uh, trust me you won't want to miss it it's uh, if you're into the 392 into pneumatic air guns in particular the 392 I, I think you're going to enjoy it a lot and then I'm planning on and I'll go over how to install the uh, how I installed the uh, sling swivels and did the mods for that so this will accept a sling and it's actually accepting a sling nicely I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with it I bought the rifle from Pyramid Air. It came as a package. I like the rifle. The scope that it came with, I'm very disappointed with. Uh, I actually took it off the rifle. You notice there's no scope on it. That scope was all over the place. I could not get it to zero to save my life. Impossible. So I took it off and I actually thought it was the rifle. I cleaned the barrel out. Uh, those of you that are familiar with these know that the Crossman does not uh, invest time in plugging the end of the barrel when they paint these. So unfortunately, the, it, it's rotten quality control, in my opinion. But you have to clean the uh, overspray out, otherwise uh, they're very inaccurate. Well. I actually cleaned it twice. The, the way that it was shooting, 
I thought, holy crap, either that I was checking the crown out. And come to find out it was the scope. I decided finally after about, I don't know, 50 rounds, I said, There's, something's not right here. So I took the scope off and used the iron sights and it was shooting great with the iron sights. Oh, I'm gonna stretch my knees out here. Whoop, sorry about that guys. Make sure you're in frame here. Very accurate with the iron sights. The only problem is uh, with aging eyes, at 25 yards I have a hard time seeing a target with the iron sights. So I am going to contact Pyramid Air and see if they will either replace the scope. If not, I'm going to go out. I'm going to have to put a purchase a scope and put it on. It definitely needs a scope. And with a scope, it'll be it'll be a tack driver. My Woodstock, my Woodstock 392 uh, is a tack driver with a uh, the scope. But I'm a huge uh, I'm a huge fan of the 392. I absolutely love it. And I, I really, I have to confess, I really like the synthetic. They call it synthetic 392S, synthetic because it's the all-weather stock. It's actually a very well-made rifle. I'm, I'm very impressed with the build quality. Um, it feels, in the hand, it feels like a much higher-end rifle. I spent some time uh, shooting it with iron sights today. Get the feel of it, and uh, it's it's very accurate. I was shooting out to 25 yards, hitting uh, soup cans, and then I turned the soup cans on their sides and was hitting the bottoms. And uh, pretty impressed with it, but uh, without a scope. The soup can, especially the bottom, set 25 yards. It was about 75% guesswork if I was on target or not. And I was having trouble seeing the front sight because it's black. Need to paint that with some white so it shows up, or red. But anyways, I've got to, I'm going to do the upcoming uh, review video on this, very thorough, and I'm going to reveal all the mods and the big surprise. I don't want to give it away yet. But, uh, like I said, if you're a fan of the 392, you won't want to miss it. I think you'll be pretty impressed with it. And uh, then uh, I have another video planned. That's probably a couple of months out. I'm going to do a head-to-head -head shootout and comparison between the older stock uh, Woodstock model and the, uh, the new. So it'll be uh, a head-to-head -head between the old and the new. So we'll do a comprehensive uh, review of both at the same time. I'm going to obtain a chronograph and uh, crony both of them so we get a good idea of what they're both putting out and uh, everything. So pretty excited about doing, uh, doing that video as well. So here's our double Cobra. It's coming along, uh, coming along nicely here, and I just noticed the shadow from my cameras, my tripods here. <laughs> Let me go ahead and reposition this. I got Stay the camera down. on the other side. The sun's starting to go down in the west, and I didn't notice I had much shadow on my my work there. So we're getting close to my marker here. I'm just going ahead and let the uh, Keep the camera rolling here because we're just about done. Nice thing about throwing this double cobra on here, if I'm ever in a situation I need paracord, I can remove the double cobra and I'll still have my sling attached to the uh, attached to the uh, the rifle 
Now there is one little surprise that I need to add to this. And again, I'm not going to reveal what that is because that's kind of part of the big surprise, which I'm going to reveal during the uh, during the uh, review that I'm going to do that, uh, in about a month. I have a washer here. I almost forgot. It was on my key ring. I stuck it on there this morning. Specifically, if you add that washer on there, I'm not going to reveal why. Not until we do the review video. But that washer there is uh, very important. It's all part of a modification that I did. And that is all I'm going to reveal on that for right now. Actually, I should put that washer. I'm going to put it right here. That way it's not on the side digging into my neck or something. Perfect. If I need to use it, it'll be right there. Okay, here's my marker. Pull the marker out of the way, so I've got about another three, three or four weaves to do on here. So don't hit me up in the comments and ask what the washer's for, because you'll have to wait for the uh, you'll have to wait for the review video. I'm not going to divulge anything right yet. One more, and I think we're I think we're good here. All right, pull these nice and tight. Yeah. All right, there's our double cobra. It's a nice little shoulder pad. So it's not so narrow. Hopefully that uh, makes it just a little bit more comfortable. Okay, so after pulling it tight, we're going to uh, verify it's tight. We're going to terminate this in exactly the same way that we did the single Cobra. Go ahead and melt these ends. And whatever you do, don't get that melted paracord on your fingers. I was melting paracord one time, and I had a, a flaming melting glob landed on my thumbnail. Oh my god. That was absolutely one of the worst pains. I think I've ever experienced. By mushrooming, mushrooming that down uh, like that it keeps it from pulling back through once it dries it's it's hard and that'll keep it from pulling back through the uh, the cord and loosening up so there we go guys that is uh, that is how to do the double cobra 
well, single cobra and double cobra, but I think it looks okay. It's not too bad. I like putting that little shoulder pad and the different color on there. It's uh, it's pretty nice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll reposition the camera, and we'll uh, get a few shots of me uh, modeling the uh, modeling the thing, and we'll wrap up the video. Stay tuned. It fits great, and the double cobra really, really made it a lot more comfortable uh, than the single. I can tell a huge, huge difference. It rides, uh, rides really good. And the shoulder works really well. I can tell a big difference here. It's not cutting into my uh, into my collarbone like it was with the single. Yeah, I think this worked out really well. Very, very pleased with it. I want to demonstrate something uh, for those of you who may be concerned that the sling is in the way of uh, pumping because this is a pneumatic. I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate how I pump. Uh, sling swivels off to the side. So the sling rides off to the left, at least this is how I uh, designed this thing. So you can still pump. The sling's not in the way at all. It's actually way out of the way. How I usually pump this, because I'm, I'm going to have to install a, I'm going to have a scope installed on here, uh, pick up another scope and put it on. I always turn it around and I just put the, the uh, top of the, uh, barrel on my thigh and as you can see the sling when you turn it over the sling automatically just lays out of the way and I put it down on my thigh and pump that's how I pump with a scope it's just a lot easier and uh, very very easy Tell you, I'm really liking this. It, it really came out nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it today. Please like, subscribe, and share. I hope all of you are having an outstanding day or night, depending on where you are located, and I will see all of you very soon on the next one. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.